welcome to Made at Home, Fill the Freezer. I'm Katie Cullum with the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. I'm the Family and Consumer Science Agent in White County, Arkansas. With me is Becca Stackhouse from the University of Georgia. She's the Family and Consumer Science Agent in Crisp County, Georgia. So, freezing. It doesn't matter what kind of freezer you have, if you have a separate freezer or just the one that's attached to your refrigerator. You can fill it up with good foods and you, that you know what's in them rather than just a lot of processed foods that you throw in the oven or the microwave. So let's get started today. We're going to talk about measuring food safety and packaging. So measuring is important. Measuring correctly is even more important. So there's different kinds of measuring cups, dry and liquid, and it's best not to interchange them for accuracy. So a dry cup, do you just scoop it? Nope, you wanna spoon your flour and sugar into the cup and then get a flat edge and Scrape it off so that you have a, a level edge there. Now, if you're doing fats or brown sugars, you want to pack it in and then level it off. For liquid measures, there's a spout and some measuring um, lines. So can you just look at it like this? Nope. That's really not the most accurate way to do it. So to get an accurate liquid measure, Set it down on a flat surface, and then you're gonna to have to get down to eye level to make sure that the liquid is at that measuring line. All right, now, there are also angled measuring cups, and these are great, you can just look at them from the top, but they're a little bit more difficult to get thick liquids out of when you're scraping, so just keep that in mind. So, there are four steps to food safety and you want to have good products when you take them out of the freezer. And the best way to do that is to keep food safety in mind. So clean, clean your hands. So warm water, soap, 20 seconds, cleaning those hands, especially after you deal with meats, raw eggs, vegetables, clean those hands often while you're cooking. You want to wash your cutting boards frequently also. The countertops, whatever you're using, you want to keep them clean. You may want to consider paper towels instead of dishcloths because you can't cross-contaminate with paper towels. You can just throw them away. If you do use dishcloths, make sure that you wash them often in hot water in the washing machine. You also want to rinse fresh fruits and vegetables under warm, or not warm, but running water. So you can also use that vegetable brush to clean those firm skin fruits and vegetables. Um, get them really clean before you cut them up or use them. And you want to separate um, in your grocery cart, in the bags, and in the refrigerator. You want to separate the raw meat from other foods in your grocery cart um, and in the refrigerator. You don't want to put raw meat that could leak juices over raw vegetables that you're not gonna cook. It's also important to use different cutting boards if possible. This is my vegetable cutting board. These are my meat cutting boards. I never cut up meat on my vegetable cutting board and I don't ever use the meat cutting boards for vegetables. Now, if you don't have separate cutting boards, that's okay. Just wash them thoroughly between uses and never place cooked food on something that held raw food also. So when you cook, this is the best, one of my best kitchen tools. It's my food thermometer. And this helps me measure the food to make sure it's done, but not too done. It's just right when I use my food thermometer. So remember that color is not an accurate indicator to see if it's done or not. Use that food thermometer food thermometer to make sure it is cooked thoroughly. When you use a microwave, make sure that you uh, stir the food, that it rotates so that there's no cold spots. And heating leftovers to 165 degrees is 
One, another way to make sure that it's cooked thoroughly. Chilling is also important. So make sure that you put things up in the refrigerator, in the, ref the freezer, as soon as you get home from the store. You don't want raw meats or eggs or cooked food or fresh uh, fruits and vegetables to sit at room temperature for more than two hours. And here in the south and in the summer, that goes down to just one. So make sure that after dinner or as you're cooking that you keep things in the refrigerator as long as possible. You never want to defrost food at room temperature. That's not good. To thaw, you can use your refrigerator, cold water, or the microwave. Always marinate food in the refrigerator. We've got a lesson on marinating, I can't wait. But use that refrigerator. Um, divide large amounts of leftovers into shallow containers for quicker cooling. And then clean out the refrigerator often so that you don't have a lot of old food that you're tempted to eat. So before chilling or before freezing, you want to chill things until they're not hot. So a shallow container is again better than in the picture she's got some, you know, deep containers. They won't cool off as fast that way. So you want to use a shallow container so that bacteria doesn't have the chance to grow in the warm spots. So packaging is also important. You want good food in there and you don't want it to get bad and you know freezer burn while it's in the freezer. So which one of those packages is not going to be as good for your food? That's right. Reusing a butter or sour cream container or other container that you just find somewhere. You want to make sure that you use good containers that are moisture, vapor resistant, durable, leak proof. Um, they're easy to seal, easy to label. So make sure that you use a good um, package. So some examples of this are something kind of rigid plastic containers with straight sides. If you're not sure, you can usually turn them over and if there's a little snowflake thing, that means that they are freezer safe. You can also use glass jars that are made for canning or freezing. A wide mouth jar is going to be easier to use also. Um, heavy duty aluminum foil is a great tool to use when you're freezing. Um, bags, freezer safe bags are important. This is a storage bag, this is a freezer bag. You can feel the difference. This one's much thicker and it's going to protect your food more than that freeze, this storage bag. So make sure that you use a good freezer bag. Now, how to pack. Again, cool that food before packing. Allow ample headspace. You don't want it to come up right to the very top. You want to wrap your foods well, especially if you use a casserole dish, you can wrap it up really well using your heavy duty aluminum foil. And as in the picture, you want to freeze in smaller, thin portions. So that's when the bags come in really handy. But you want to press out all the excess air that you can before you put them in the freezer. And they also come with these handy dandy labels. So use a permanent marker to date and label what is in that bag because you may not recognize it after it's been in the freezer for a while. It's also good to put the number of servings or how much is in there. So for those, this picture, I have shredded chicken. So I measured out how much chicken is in that bag so I can easily pull out enough for a recipe. So now that we've got that taken care of, we're gonna make sure that we use good food safety and good packaging so that we can get our food in the freezer and it's gonna be really good when we get it out. Now I'm going to turn it over to Becca and she's going to help us to fill the freezer with this good recipe. Hi guys, welcome back to Made It Home Freezer Edition. And so we are in June and we're going to talk about your freezer. Some quick things. So when you're meal prepping, buy two of everything and this way you can make one for now for this week and go ahead and process and have that one for later ready. So. What you're gonna do is when you're preparing, you're gonna have this ready. So you're gonna get your chicken, so you want about four chicken breasts. Then you wanna put a jar of tomato or spaghetti sauce. 
a can of tomatoes and a teaspoon of garlic in your bag and you're gonna freeze all of this. So we've pulled it out of the freezer, it's set in our refrigerator to thaw a little bit and then we're gonna stick it in our crock pot. So we've got our onions, our bell peppers and I'm throwing a little celery in with it too. That's all ready. We're gonna add our chicken in on top of our vegetables. And remember, anytime you touch meat or poultry, you want to make sure that you wash your hands well for 20 seconds afterwards. So once we've got our meat in there, we've got our celery, we're going to take our tomato sauce mixture out of that bag that had been frozen, and we're going to just dump it right on top. So... This is our slow kick cook chicken casserole. And so this has got about 520 calories, about eight grams of total fat. We're talking about 130 grams of sodium. Overall, you got about 49 grams of protein. So this is a great dish and it will create some leftovers. So have it for dinner with your family one night and then have it again for lunch the next day. Make it twice on your meal prep day, once for that week, and then freeze it and make it for the next or later time. So it's ready in your freezer for a quick ready to go grab dinner. So if you've got it on high, you're gonna cook it for about four hours. If you do it on low, you're gonna cook it six to eight hours. Make sure to check your chicken temperature and make sure that it is at 165 degrees Fahrenheit to be done. So we'll check back on this in just a little while.